and of course I could have said you know what let's take a derivative of that first well that's a power function bring the power function down so the power down subtracting from the power times dx minus the product rule derivative of the first times the second plus the first the second is a power function you bring the power function you bring the power down subtracting from the power times dy plus I see a power function of the 3, bring the power down, subtract one from the power dy, and a derivative of constant is 0. And then you could go in there and divide each of those by the desired derivative. And then you could easily say, well, look, that's 3x squared minus y squared minus 2xy dy dx plus 3y squared dy dx equals 0 and that matches the stage Alright, three more problems to go of this type. So if I want to take a derivative of this, again if you're not comfortable with this, keep on doing this until you become comfortable with it. It's not going anywhere. If I take a derivative of this, again, the problem says find dy dx. Derivative of cosine is negative the sine of xy times the derivative of this. Derivative of x, it matches. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second. Derivative of one is zero. I'm just writing that back for your notes. Derivative of a sine is a cosine times since that doesn't match a y prime or a dy dx now even if i say do not simplify the least amount of work you could do is get me dy dx by itself that's the least amount of work you're gonna have to do so implicit is not going anywhere it is extremely important. I need to get the y primes on one side. Factor a y prime out. And if I was to factor a y prime out, what would be left? A cosine of y plus x the sine of x y and if I look at the next problem derivative of will bring the power down subtract one from the power y prime plus product rule derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of y cubed bring the power down subtract one from the power zero product rule again derivative of the first times the second plus the first times y prime I'll do number 20 on the bottom well let's see how this works I need all the y primes on one side so I'm gonna get rid of those two to the right, this one to the right and this to the left. I'm looking at five y to the fourth y prime plus three x squared y squared y prime minus x to the fourth y prime equals four x cubed y minus two x y cubed. If I factor a y prime out, I'll get a 4x cubed y minus 2xy cubed divided by, if I factor a y prime out, what would be left? A 5y to the fourth, we're going to divide both sides by that now. So, no need to keep on doing that in so many steps. There it is. This might reduce sometimes at this point. So, Number 20, 
if I want to take a derivative of, again, the outside most function, if I was using the chain rule, I'll say, well, I'm going to have the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared before I reach that angle, times the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of x is 1 minus y prime. That's the quotient rule. Derivative of the top times the bottom. Minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. All over the bottom part. That's capitalist. Now, I need this y prime by itself. So, so I need to get rid of a few things. One, I'm going to distribute this in. That's going to be the secant squared of x minus y. Minus y prime. And the secant squared of x minus y equals y prime plus x squared y prime minus 2xy over 1 plus x squared y squared. And if I cross multiply, 1 plus x squared y squared secant squared of x minus y minus y prime times 1 plus x squared squared secant squared of x minus y equals y squared minus 2x plus x squared y. I need those two on one side. So if I move this, let me think. If I move this to the left and this to the right, I'm looking at negative y prime 1 plus x squared squared minus x squared equals oh I forgot I forgot the rest the secant squared of x minus y minus x squared y prime equals on the right hand side I have a y squared minus 2xy and when I move this to the right that becomes a negative 1 plus x squared squared secant squared of x minus y now if I factor a y prime out, I'll get all of this mess. Divided by what? This? could play with that a bit, manipulate it a bit, factor a negative out of the denominator if you wish. It makes no difference whatsoever. Now, let's look at number 22. Find g prime of 0. If I take a derivative, well, this is g prime of x plus the product, derivative of the first times the second. Plus the first derivative of sine is the cosine of g of x times g prime of x plus g. And this is 2x. So g of x is taking the place of y in this case. I could have solved for it, but I didn't want to. I want to do it so we can practice implicit differentiation. If I approximate those, I'd see that put a 0 there, 0 there. 0 there, 0 there, 0 there, and 0 there. I'm looking at g prime of 0 plus sine of g of 0 plus 0 times the cosine of g of 0 times g prime of 0. Well, I have g prime of 0 plus the sine of g of 0, we'll get to that in a minute, this is equal 0, so I have g prime of 0 equaling the sine of g of 0, negative, right, and now if I want to find g of 0, I get into the very original problem, and I say, well, let's see what g of 0 is, g of 0, 
plus 0 times the sine of the cosine of 0 equals 0 squared, and g of 0 is actually 0. So this is the sine of 0. So therefore, g prime of 0, which is the answer of this one. Last problem I want to look at is number 30. I'd like to work out this and see what they want. Oh, I don't write the directions. Okay, with all the excitement. Let's find the equation of a tangent line. And if you look at the tangent line, it's they're trying to find the equation of that one. Well, I know that's y minus y1 equal m into x minus x1. There we go. These are famous problems in the book. So if I take a derivative, bring the power down, subtract 1 from the power. Bring the power down, subtract 1 from the power. Except this makes a y prime equal to 0. If I multiply by three halves both sides, one over radical three, one over cube root of three, plus one over cube root of y, y prime equals zero. And if I move that over, one over cube root of y, y prime equal negative one over cube root of x. And if I cross multiply, I'll have y equal negative the cube root of y over x evaluated at this value for x, this value for y. I'll be looking at y prime negative the cube root of 1 over 3 the cube root of 3 negative. So that makes that a positive, and that would be my answer. y minus y1 equal 1 over the cube root of 3, the square root of 3, into x minus 3 radical. And there's the homework for this section.